and welcome to the Shaken Up show. Uh, my name's Sani Rudravadula, and uh, I'm going to be joined today by uh, a very special player for Berry AFC because uh, without him, we'd concede a shed load of goals. And it's our goalkeeper, Ed Wolchinski, who joins me live from uh, the living room, I'm guessing, with the shot, maybe bedroom, the spare room. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bedroom, bedroom. bedroom. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're, not, you're not jazzed up your bedroom like I no, have. No, I haven't, mate. No, no, you've put me to shame there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh first off you know my my surname is 12 letters long so uh it's nice to put the shoe on the other foot here yeah um how do you pronounce your name correctly so i have this all the time sort of thing every time like i've signed for a club or anything like that like they don't know i've had numerous uh pronunciations and everything so it's the easiest is like it's will then chin and then like you're going skiing so it's will chin ski <laughs> That's the easiest <laughs> way to sort of to do it to everyone. I, I love how you've managed to like make a series of actions to go along yeah, with it. You've, yeah, yeah, you've yeah. had to. You, you're very used to having to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, now uh, I have uh, been on the internet and done a bit of googling, so uh, I found out a little bit about you. But hopefully, we'll find out a little bit more about you yeah. uh, today. Uh, but according to according to Google, and stop me when I'm wrong, <laughs> you're 26 years old. Yeah. Uh, you uh, started your career at Huddersfield. You had some loan mm. spells at FC United, uh, Trafford, Hyde, and then moved on to Bishop Auckland, Darlington, Shaw Lane, Osset United, Yorkshire Amateur. And now you're at Berry AFC. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can I'd, trust uh, some stuff that's on the yeah. internet. Yeah, short stint at AFC filed as well, uh, but not, nothing major sort of thing. It was just another one to add to the uh, clubs of the like, list of clubs, <laughs> <laughs> if you want enough already. And uh, as well as a goalkeeper, you're also a barber as well. So I might ask you a little bit about that. Maybe I need yeah, some no, tips, yeah, actually. Yeah, Maybe not so much on top these days, but yeah. you know, certainly certainly my beard uh, could do with a bit of fixing. I almost shaved a little <laughs> bit off and kind of like got a pen and fixed it up again. Yeah. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> and um, according to the internet, you are you're born in Poland. Is that correct? No, that's not oh, correct. I'll no, tell no, you no, what. No, I, was, uh, I, know, I was born in England uh, and my granddad's is a uh, Polish. So me, uh, my dad was born in England and everyone. Uh, it was just my granddad that was born in uh, Poland. So yeah. well, there you go. The, the, uh, we've, we've come unstuck on the third point on the thing. And I've got right. a whole thing here <laughs> about, about Polish goalkeepers, but I suppose, I suppose that the, the, the blood might still be there. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a rich line, you know, Chesney, Fabianski, yeah. uh, Artur Boric, and of course, uh, Pope John Paul II was a goalie as well, wasn't he? So. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was on him. Uh, I have had a, uh, it was a commentator once and he was saying like he just obviously seeing the last name was Polish and he was just like calling me Will Chesney all the way through the game sort of thing so I've had I've had them all <laughs> well uh, the best one I had in my science teacher days for Rudra Vagula uh, was Rubber Spatula so if it's any consolation that was, right, yeah, that was probably yeah, the yeah, wittiest I, 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 was quite, I was quite impressed with that one no, I was a very I was a pretty bright <laughs> kid they, they're usually yeah. never as clever as that <laughs> no I know uh, so uh, goalkeeping it's it's a bit of a well, the you know the cliche is you've got to be mad. Are, are you a bit mad? Uh, see, I, I not really. No, I mean all the lads that I've seen, like in the change room, and that have said, "Oh, for a keeper, you're quite normal," which <laughs> can obviously tell, like they've had some sort of loose cannons back in the day, sort of thing. So yeah, I feel like I'm not. I'm not really a hot head or summer like that. I can get a bit angry on the pitch, but um. Mad, yeah, probably a little bit, but not not like everyone thinks sort of thing. But yeah, it, it's definitely the toughest gig, though, isn't it? If any if any position on the pitch, you know, I I, I if you want to call my level of football football, it's barely be about four to three four divisions below where where AFC are now, and that yeah. was only because uh, I fell out. Well, the manager fell out with all the first team players, and he pushed up me from the reserves. But anyway, I played right back. You know, that's that's fairly straightforward. You know, you get the ball at your feet, hit the ball down the line, taking a throw. Yeah. Stay on, stick, you know, play them offside, you're all right. But goalkeeping, yeah. there's nowhere to hide, is there? Yeah, I think everything's just highlighted. Um, you know, for say a striker or something like that, it's a bit opposite. You know, you could have four or five chances and miss, but you could always get that sixth chance to put it in the back of the net sort of thing. I think with being a keeper, it's, you know, you could make, you know, four or five great saves and then it comes to one and, you know, you always the one you get beat near post or, you know, you, you fumble it into your net and it's all the good saves that you made throughout the game have, have sort of gone and everyone just remembers the mistake sort of thing. So, yeah, I feel like it's just everything's highlighted a bit more as where when you get further up the pitch, if you lose the ball or anything like that, 
there's normally players behind you to sort of recover it. Obviously, with there's no one behind me. If I lose it, it's it's normally results in a goal. So yeah. Well, p- perhaps that's where the the whole idea of being mad comes from. You, you know, you've got to you've certainly got to be mentally tough, haven't you? To yeah, you know, if you make a mistake in the first ten minutes, not dwell on that for the next day. Yeah, yeah, and get through yeah. the game. A bit of that mental strength to sort of come back on that. But it, it's always that there is a big saying going like, "Would be a goalkeeper sort of thing." Of you see it on match a day, and it's like they make a big who are about it of like just going on about the mistake but they don't show you all the great saves that they made before and everything so yeah you learn to deal with it a bit more uh, than that so it's not too bad and obviously it highlights things a bit more with more fans watching and stuff but you get used to it you've just got to sometimes take it on the chain and just hold your hands up and, and just go again um, you're never going to sort of like learn if you don't make mistakes so yeah so is that a message to our media team? Make sure if you've made a save, keep it in the highlights reel, right? Yeah, I mean, I've already been on to the cameraman as well because he's always up at the end <laughs> of the pitch. So there's there's always more pictures of their goalkeeper than us. So, you know, um, so I've told him to, you know, last 10, 15 minutes or first 15 minutes, get a few shots and then you can go up the other end of the pitch and see the <laughs> lads celebrating. Yeah, or, or, or do it or reshoot it afterwards, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... Did you do? Did you always want to be a goalkeeper? Um, so no, it sort of came from. Um, I've got a brother that's three years older than me, uh, so he was always trying to get me out with his mates, but I'd always get stuck in net. So it was always like stick the younger brother in net. So it won of that, and then uh, quite lazy to be fair. When I started out at football, um, <laughs> I couldn't be bothered doing all the running around. And then when I went in net, I was actually I was all right at it sort of thing. So I just stuck at it, and uh, yeah, just just went from there really. Yeah, so you are a Huddersfield Town fan. You you uh, born and bred in Huddersfield, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you ended up signing for your hometown club as a goalie. That must have been amazing. What was that experience like? When, how did that come about? Um, so it, it just local, really. Obviously, I was playing for my local team, Junior Collegians, and then um, just got scouted, and it was like a a four week trial um, every week for just on a Thursday night. Um, we've sort of the first team keeper coach took the trial list as well that night. Um, it got to the end of the four weeks, and I feel like it's hard to see someone in in four sessions just what they're gonna do sort of thing. So I just I just thought I'll take my chance and sort of thing. So I just after the session, uh, after the last one, I just shook his hand and said, "Can I come back next week?" And I think for a 40, to say to a fourteen year old lad, "No, you're all right." Uh, it was quite tough sort of thing so I did that for about another six weeks and I think there well, was every big... week going I'll see yeah. you next week yeah <laughs> fair I enough yeah. Yeah. All right, oh, sound. So, um, I just did that and it just I think it was just it took a chance on me um, and then it, I was there for the next sort of seven years um, so yeah it worked out all right I think it was a little tip for my dad as well to just go up and shake his hand and say oh can I come back next week and yeah it, it, it sort of looked at me and thought it can't arm sort of thing but it just carried on and carried on and then they finally took a chance on me and it, and it's a it's every every kid's dream isn't it to play for the team you support and you know look at the shirt and look at the badge and see yeah, the yeah, team that you yeah, play yeah. for you support yeah. that must have been um you know for, for all, all the levels you represented Huddersfield at that must have been a special moment for you or special oh, it was, yeah definitely uh that and signing sort of like my first like professional contract with with my sort of hometown club and that um yeah just one of them just fell short really that horrible cruel football game that you get released and you sort of don't know where your paths are gonna go so yeah yeah well well, that's the other tough thing about goalkeeping isn't it? it's not just the mistakes and that element you know there can only ever be 92 goalkeepers in any one round of fixtures in in the football league so it's it's yeah. a tough it's a tough nut to crack wasn't it now were you so you when did you leave Huddersfield and do you, do you still look back on your time there fondly or, or is it bittersweet now uh, yeah, I enjoyed my time there and everything like that. And when I did get released, I, I did feel like it was, I wasn't going to get any any further sort of thing. I just looked at the people above me and everything like that. And it was the number one keeper and everything. And I just knew it was sort of time that I wasn't, I wasn't going to push into the first team. So it was going to go elsewhere. But no, uh, I love my time there. It was good. A um, few managers that I didn't get on with. But other than that, it, it was it was good. Yeah. And uh, you, you you stuck at it because you know we, you read all the time about uh, players have come through um, you know professional club system and and leave and then give it up entirely. Uh, what what happened next for you? 
Um, so it was a, it's a weird one. Um, I went to uh, York City um, and got in there, did really well, got told I was signing, offered me a contract and everything, um, which was sort of like, oh, you know, sort of buzzing. I, I'm going to sign straight away. It's taken me a month, but, you know, I've worked hard and everything like that. They said, you'll sign on the, uh, the Friday at the stadium. Uh, got the contract written up and everything. And then that Friday, um, came off to training and everyone had sort of like disappeared out of training. So I was like, didn't know really what to do, what was happening or anything. So I stuck around, had a shower and everything and then just knocked on the manager's door and says, what's what's happening sort of thing I was signing today. They were, and then straight away, they just said, oh, look, we've decided to get another keeper in. After I'd been training there for about three weeks and everything like that. So it is, that was another sort of setback and that. And I, I thought at that point, I, there's no point sort of thing like. Um, so I probably had a week or two sort of just working with some mates that I know that are electricians and everything like that. And then um, out of nowhere, AFC filed, uh, popped up. There was there was pro as well sort of thing, uh, starting out in the Conference North. And the exact same happened to me there. Uh, got offered a contract, um, drove into training two days later and saw another keeper with the number one shirt on the pitch, signing a contract. So I was like... Oh. Right, I've just drove so basically all the way to Blackpool for the training session to sign the contract and there's another keeper there. So yeah, I um came across a few hurdles sort of thing to keep at it. Um and at this point, sort of it was that I wasn't earning money. It was still pre season, I hadn't signed anywhere. So it came a point where I, I had to go get a job. It were it was simple as that. Um and then in the meantime, if anything else popped up, then I would go back pro. But yeah, I sort of had my fair share of trials and getting promised a lot and sort of let down but it's one of them it's I just looked at it and thought I'm gonna have to go and some money and if, if I have to get a job I have to get a job so yeah that was sort of how it went from there so is is that where being a barber came into it or was that later uh, on no that was about probably a year after um so I went working I did, I did loads of jobs trialed everything like didn't know where I was going to be or anything um like I said just doing laboring with lads that were sparkies, plumbers and everything like that. And then um, I got in touch with one of my mates who worked at a company just doing timber frame builds of houses and everything in a warehouse. So I went there for nine months. I just wanted another career. I didn't, I could see myself in the warehouse being there for the next 10, 20 years and going sort of no further. Um, so I felt like football was a career. So I thought I'll, I'll do something that I want to enjoy. And so I, I don't feel like I'm getting out of bed and it's a chore. So I knew one of my mates I went to school with, he did a barbering course, um, said, can I come down for some trials and everything like that? And he was like, yeah, fine. Uh, I was 24 at this point. So I had to restart again. So I did my, all my uh, education again with the barbering and the practical work and that. And then I started off in a salon, which I currently work now. And I was back on £3.40 an hour at 24 year old. So I then still had to carry on with my football to to keep my to keep my funds up sort of thing. So I, I almost like start a, redid everything again sort of thing of of doing it. So yeah, that's that's where it sort of came about. Everyone looked at me strange when they said, "Oh, footballer to sort of hairdressing, barbering, and that." Um, but it was just something that I liked. I enjoyed it. I didn't I didn't see it as work. You're meeting new people every day, and I do and enjoy it. So yeah, it's, it was just one of them really. Yeah, how much is it about cutting the hair and how much is it about being like a an amateur psychologist or a bit of a, an agony uncle when you get Yeah, there? it's uh you get you get told some secrets that obviously you stay with it, you know, it stays with you and that. Um but yeah, you, you come across some weird and wonderful people, you really do. Um some people are there just to get their hair cut, get me in and out, and some people are there for a chat and a coffee and that's sort of like their day out. So yeah, you come across a lot of people, obviously, during the day. I mean, lockdown was tough. Uh, the salon's been shut five months this year. So, obviously, December, the busiest period anyway. And then we've got to catch up from last month. So, yeah, it's been it's been hands-on, obviously, since we've re-back open. And you talk about weird and wonderful people. I know, um, you know, as a non-league goalkeeper, and you've played for a number of non-league teams, you must have uh, had a few experiences of the weird people behind the goals from that side of things as well. Any, yeah. Any, any get, stories let a jump out at you or anything? Any... <laughs> uh, 
No, not really. I get a few of the Bury fans saying, oh, can you give me an haircut after the game sort of thing. Like, but no, other than that, um, and obviously if, if you're losing and this and over, you get a few fans sort of, oh, you should stick to cutting hair and this and over, get back to your barber shop and that. But <laughs> other than that, no, just a general sort of like trying to get you to to get wound up and that, but nothing nothing that stands out really, no. Oh, that's, well, that's all right. That's, that's, that's good to know because it's, it yeah, is, yeah. I suppose for us, as we've been used to, the football league uh, as fans all our, yeah. all our lives. Um, I think there's still that adjustment, especially with, with, with the way things have gone and we've not managed to experience as much football. I think a lot yeah. of us haven't quite um, kind of come, got an understanding of the com- camaraderie there is in non-league with the fans as well. They're, they're more likely to be yeah. kind of like lighthearted and just, you know, everyone's kind of, you know, our team's crap, your team's crap. We're all kind of just <laughs> having a nice time and enjoying the football. Yeah. We're not going to like start giving everyone abuse. So, um, I yeah, guess yeah. I guess it's more been friendly stuff than that. Not to say yeah, our team's yeah. crap, by the way. No, you know? no, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'm fired. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's tough because I've been in a similar situation. Obviously, I signed for Darlington. Obviously, the the fans there were the same sort of thing. Used to league football, and they have the they have their the the arena stadium taken away from them and that. So and obviously every week there were you know two three thousand there uh, at Darlington, and there was. It was doing the same ground sharing and that, but the lads that I've been with, they'd been there sort of five years with the, the manager, Martin Gray, and they'd have had four or five promotions. It's just sort of like they're stuck now on in the Conference North. It's just pushing through that next barrier. Um, when I was there, we actually made it into the playoffs their first season, and the stadium didn't hold enough to go to the conference. So then Chorley took our spot in the playoffs oh, wow. and, they, and they went on. Um, I think they just fell short in the final. So yeah, that was a bit of a kick in the teeth sort of thing of the the stadium didn't have enough to hold for the next step, which is the conference. So we had to drop out the playoffs and Charlie took our spot. But it was the same, same for the, the fans there. Obviously, they have they had the sort of club taken away from them and Darlington, 1885, I think it started up as, and then they had to get the name back and everything. So... Obviously, when I had the chance to come to Bury, it was sort of a similar thing to to get into. So that's why I sort of jumped at the opportunity to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, this is relatively uh, quite a low level for you to come to. You must have seen something special in what's going on here to decide to to play for Bury, right? Yeah. I think it, it comes to more of just like dropping down the leagues. I think it's... The whole, you know, like you say, having loads of fans watching and everything like that. And it's it's having that, being a part of like, hopefully pushing up the leagues at like like Darlington did and everything like that. So I think it's one of them of more having the fans around and everything like that. Like I've played with, with clubs and there's 30, 40 people watching. So it's the old atmosphere, the old buzz around. If you're not in the team, you can walk around and talk with, talk, talk with the fans and everything. So yeah, I think it's a, a project that everyone sort of bought into and every person that's come to the club has you know, not thought about, oh yeah, it's dropping down a league or anything like that. They've seen the whole, they've seen the bigger picture of why they're coming to the football club sort of thing. So yeah. Great stuff. Going, mm. going back to um, your development as a, as a player, is there yeah. anyone who kind of, you know, when you think back at your experiences in, you know, with Huddersfield and other clubs you've been at, that kind of stick out as kind of a, a, a big influence in, in your, your footballing side of things? Um, yeah, definitely at Huddersfield. Um, Sort of, it were John Vaughan. He's at Bradford City now. He was the one that actually signed me and gave me my first scholarship and that. Uh, so he was a massive influence, sort of a bit just like straight to the point sort of thing. Um, told me what what was right, what was wrong, and then for a long time I had Nick Colgan, who was a pro at Huddersfield as a as a player and everything, and then he he took over as youth team keep coach at Town. So I had him for about probably most most of my time when I was scholarship and a pro. So I probably had him for four years. He helped me a lot. And even when I came into non-league, um, rung him over deals that I had or offers that I had. And I was like, what, what do you think? And so he advised me on what to do and what to say and everything like that. Because obviously it, it's really weird if you just talk to a manager when you want to sign somewhere. There's no in-between men or anything like that. It's just let's meet up at the nearest Costa and just have a chat sort of thing. So it was all new to me of what, what to sign, what not to sign and this and other. 
Um, and then another, probably, he did a bit, he's a coach at, um, I don't know, is it Forest? No, he's not, he's at Middlesbrough now, uh, Ian Bennett. So he was uh, another uh, pro. Golly, golly Bradford at uh, Birmingham, wasn't he as well, yeah? It was, yeah, yeah. So he'd play at the highest level and that, and he give a lot of sort of advice and everything on what to do, and kept in contact as well after after playing at Huddersfield. So yeah, probably them three have had the most sort of influence on what I've done from Huddersfield, um, and obviously still keeping in contact and everything, which is another good sign. Right. So you're still in touch with them even now? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I, oh, I, I basically when I left Huddersfield, I got to a point where pad and pen and everyone that I knew in Huddersfield, I, I just rang or text saying, look, have you got the goalkeeper's number here? Have you got it there? Whatever. And I just, at one point, I was actually ringing just managers and saying, do you want a keeper? And they're like, no, we're all right. And I was just like, just pass my name on to anyone that needs a keeper. And it got to the point where I was just crossing people out on a list that were next to me sort of thing. So I, I can honestly say when I left Huddersfield, I did everything I could to sort of try get back to that pro level. But it just... One of them, but weren't meant to be. I didn't, I didn't sort of dwell on it. Sort of one of them, you know, should have, would have, could have sort of moments. It's I'm a barber now and a semi-pro footballer, and then go from there. So yeah, well, well, you know, it's not. Um, do you do you ever have you, do you would you ever rule out? You know, is it is it too big a dream at this stage? Because you know, goalkeepers, you know, can go on an awful long time these days. And if you look after yeah. yourself, I mean, you know, you look at the very top of the game. Petr Cech somehow come out of nowhere and is back playing again. But yeah, you know, it's not, it's not impossible, is yeah. it? You, you could have a, no. you could have the best part of twenty years before you end up uh, retiring yeah. at this rate. It's a, uh, it's a tough one. I get asked it a lot by clients that come in and everything. And I think it's one where you, you, you'd need that contract of having the stability for the next three or four years. And what would happen sort of afterwards that. Obviously, if you sign for another team, it's it's got to be the right everything, you know. Obviously, right money, right contract, and that. Um, as where with, with football, contract can end, you know, the next day or the the following year, sort of thing. With the job that I've got now, it, it's a job for life. I've got a trade, you know. I can go in other salons and work. So it's a tough one because if I was to do go pro for three or four years, and then come back out, I'd have to sort of restart again. So I'd have to build up a clientele again and everything like that and go back in. And so I think it puts you in a very awkward spot if there was a pro team to come in for you, what you do if, you know, if you've got to leave a job to then go into a job that can only be certain for three years. So it, it's, it, it would be a big decision and it'd have to be the right, right everything to do it. But um, yeah, I'd definitely consider it. But in my own head, I, I, think, it's, I think it's sort of past me. I think it's sort of gone. Um, so yeah, I just focus on what I've got in front of me now is obviously Bury and uh, the barbering side of things. Yeah, and uh, so so the the salons in um, the, the mean streets of Huddersfield, right? And I, and I say that uh, because I've seen your Twitter, and at one point there, there wasn't a street, or at least somebody had uh, had nicked the flagstones uh, yeah. right outside the shop. <laughs> so we had the uh, Yorkshire stone nicked out the side of the salon. Yeah, so it was. We got there one morning and there was a few stones missing. So we're like, right, we'll ring the uh, council and um, didn't do anything about it. And then the next day we came, there were more ston- stones gone. So we're like, right, we'll have to do something about it. So it wasn't until I tweeted them that they actually did something about it. So it was sort of like publicly shaming them. And uh, yeah, but you make it make it sound like a cut air in a real rough area now, mate. So uh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I just went on your Twitter, <laughs> looked at your picture, scrolled, only scrolled yeah. down about five, and then it was it was like his pavement completely yeah, gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At uh, no, it's, Council, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a very unique salon. Like you know, it's got a restaurant underneath, and there's a the sort of the spa and beauty thing upstairs. So it's it's a massive sort of complex, but the area is just a, a bit eerie, should we say? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's not your only tweet to the council. Do you, do you remember what your other one's been about? <laughs> yeah, if you, uh, see, it's the same problem. It's uh, it's the little ginnel about what you know, all being a mess and everything. So yeah, it's just a it's just a bit of public shaming. Until you actually do that, it's there's there's nothing that gets done. Literally, right, because because on the one I saw, um, you <laughs> tweeted them that you said there were some abandoned syringes 
And then yeah. the real, the real uh, red, red writing on the wall uh, was Japanese knotweed was also yeah, very so sweet as well. That, that will definitely get their attention. <laughs> so I, I didn't know anything about this until the actual owner of the salon and, and who owns of complex is like, oh, it's got like this Japanese knotweed down there. I'm like, well, I don't have a clue what that is. I said, you're just making it up. And like something that grows underneath concrete, that's illegal. And it can basically start, you know, eating away at house and stuff. So I just thought I'd just add it in there just to see what happens sort of thing. So <laughs> yeah, I just, anything, I was putting anything down there. So yeah, it was one of them. Right, that's it. Next, next time I've any issues with the council, I'm just going to say, if, Honest, there's, there's X, way. Y, and Z, and yeah. there's some Japanese knotweed as yeah. well, whether it's Definitely. there or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, it, going back to, you talked about who was influencing you as a player. Um, yeah. How about people you might have played with or, or come against? Have you had any um, people who really st- stick out in your mind as uh, who've, who've been blown you away? Um, I played with... Um, it was a. I was at Shaw Lane at the time. Um, to be fair though, I've I've played with a few lads that are at Bury now. I've got. Uh, I was with Greg and uh, Greavesy at uh, FC United when I was seventeen. That was obviously like still playing at Gig Lane at the time. Um, so obviously Greavesy was a, a big non-league name anyway. But that was I was on loan from Huddersfield to FC United. So obviously he was sort of standout player as it was bagging goals and everything like that. Um, another one I was at Shaw Lane at the time it was uh, David Norris ex-league player played for Ipswich and a few other clubs and he was sort of the same at the time when I was at Shaw Lane Not, things weren't really going right for me I was on on loan from Darlington because they've just got another keeper in and I just I was on the brink of just going I can't be bothered with it or like you know but he, he sort of you just got to keep going sort of keep your head in that so he was it, it was a it was a veteran pro. He'd been there, done it, obviously, coming from where he was, playing in the highest level and everything, and dropping dropping down leagues. So I think he, at one point, wanted to sort of give it up and just stop, but he said, just, just keep going sort of thing. And it, I'm glad I did, to be fair, because obviously, if not, I wouldn't have been playing football and it's not... I wouldn't have been at Bury, so yeah, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's, but it's not, nothing's quite gone to plan, has it, so far? I mean, obviously, there's, there's the pandemic that's, you know, majorly yeah. had a huge disruption to what's happening at Bury AFC. Um, what, what's your experience been like so far? And especially, what's, what's it been like in this, in this hiatus period? How, how have you kept yourself busy? Um, it's been tough, not going to lie. Um, the first lockdown, uh, the salon was short, where I think I was, I was off for 15 weeks, so it got to the point where you sort of get used to it, but there was me and my girlfriend um, and my mum and dad sort of in the same house, so it was, you know, a bit of on top of each other sort of thing, and, and that, you just had to keep yourself busy, um, obviously the fitness side of it was getting to a point because you, there's only so many 5Ks that you can do sort of each day and everything, and, and that, so that it was could go over form. 5K, I had to stay yeah, at 5K. Fair. Couldn't have yeah, done 6K. 5K, yeah. No, 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 it's 5K, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't even do that in a game, I don't think. So, yeah, just 5K is happy <laughs> enough for me. Um, so, yeah, just just to just start ticking over, really. Obviously, doing all the Zoom chats with work and everything like that. Um, but it's it's just the uncertainty of what, what happens. Um, for me, now with football, I'm not back until January. We're obviously getting sent off against Golka. So, it's same again. It's just ticking over and that and I can't wait obviously to be back and the fat and the full capacity to be uh in the stadium so yeah so it's, a, it's an awful long suspension for you then um, yeah I, I don't understand it if I'm honest mate um I've seen the report and it says professional foul so professional foul is stopping a goal scoring opportunity and it's it's a one game ban but he's put me down for three games. So I got sent off about six weeks ago, I think it was, and I still haven't served it. So it'll be this Saturday, first game, 26th. And I think I'm back on the night from Jan. I think I worked it out. I'm going to have to double check. But so, yeah, obviously Kai, who's sort of behind me, he'll be playing. And uh, yeah, I've just it's sort of that long period now where I've just got to, you know, go support the lads on a Saturday and keep going training and, and yeah, just see how it sort of pans out, really. And um, I know quite a few of the players are coming 
across the Pennines. Um, I think something I, I've kind of like realized is, you know, you all, you've had your own journey to this point and every player has had their own experiences, but they all really want to be playing. The, 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 yeah. you know, the, they've all got trades. They're all doing other things as well. They're traveling all this way. You know, when it's yeah. late on a Thursday night, uh, they must really want it. Do you get, do you get that impression as well from your side of things? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one because the, the, everyone's got a job, you know, it, it's one of them you're working sort of all day, get home, you, you see your girlfriend or for some people, wife and kids and that, and then, and then they're back out sort of thing and they don't get, don't get back till half, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Um, but it is a lot of, lot of sacrifice and um, I think some people think with semi-pro football, it's just how you go, have a knockabout, get paid, go back home. But, you know, it does it does take a lot of time up, but it's sort of worth it of what, what you want to be a part and hopefully win the league come into the season. And I'm guessing you've got some understanding family, girlfriend and parents as well. Yeah, I, I mean, mum and dad don't sometimes understand it when I say like, like I didn't play on the game uh, last night and they were like, oh, you're in the squad. I said, no, no. I said, oh, well, why not? Like, I said, well, there's no point in playing me if... If I'm banned, there's no point in wasting minutes on me. So I said, just like the other keeper, or oh, when I was actually with Bury, um, there was like, have you signed yet? I'm like, no, I haven't offered me out yet. All right, next week. And they sort of they don't ask any questions anymore now because it, it's too complicated. Of he was in one week and then he was out and he's got released and this and other. So yeah, it's uh, like I say for them, they enjoy it. They can uh, you know come have a drink on the sideline, which is always good, and then I have to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> well um it's been great having a chat uh but are you ready for a bit of a quiz yeah that's fine yeah no worries <laughs> the worst um, part so... of this part because my knowledge is awful <laughs> no no well i don't know i thought i'd um i thought well I, i've tried to blend a bit of a bit of huddersfield in there yeah um and then I, and then i've got an, another element you know uh, i i won't say i've i've hastily thrown this together uh right I said barely from it. It's yeah, yeah, problem. yeah, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll start you off with one. I'd like to think you'd probably know. Uh, question one. So I'll tell you what we'll do is you can write them down and then we'll go through the answers after. Because we're not live, that gives everyone yeah. at home a chance to play along as well. So, yeah, yeah. so everyone at home, I'll give, you, I'll give you a second or so, a couple of seconds. Grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. We've got, uh, we've got six questions and then we've got a bit of a, bit of a bonus thing. So um, hopefully you've managed to get a pen now and I can stop. Uh, waffling on. Ready? Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> right, Eddie. Right. Ed, we're ready. Right. Question number one. In what year was Hudders Huddersfield Town formed? <laughs> <laughs> right. We've lost him already. <laughs> yeah, you've got me there, mate. Yeah, nice one. All oh, right. Okay. Know. Question number two. What does the A stand for in Berry AFC? Ready for number three? Yeah. All right. This is a who am I? Okay. This is a current footballer. Okay. Yep. I played nine games in the Premier League. I played 224 times for Huddersfield. I had two spells at Berry. I was twice the player of the year at Huddersfield and once the player of the year at Berry FC. And I'm still playing. Oh. Have it one more time. Yeah, so I played nine times in the Premier League, 224 times for Huddersfield Town. I had two separate spells at Berry. I was the player of the year at Huddersfield twice and at Bury once and I'm still a current footballer. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how long this person's name is you're writing down <laughs> I don't know I'm right, I don't know yeah I think I've got it don't, you're going to kick yourself if you can don't you, get can it. you tell me what league he plays in now or not can you give me like a bit of a yeah, clue yeah yeah go on then. Uh, he plays in league two now uh, 
Uh, I think I know it is, but I don't. I have to have a. I guess it's a bit darker that one. Um, question four: oh. Who is the current top goal scorer for Berry AFC? That's an easy one. Yeah. Give you an easy one. Question five: How many goals have they scored in the league? Uh, right. Ready for the next one? Yep. Okay. Um, which one of these three, which one out of these three is the odd one out? Huddersfield Town's badge, Berry FC's badge, and Manchester City's old badge. Now, this is, <laughs> I might give you a bit of a helping hand on this one. I'll give you, do you know what? I'll make it a bit easier. Okay. So they've all got something in common, but one of they've them. They've all has. got something in common, but one of them's the odd one out. Okay. So, and do you know, I'm going to make it a little bit easier, right? The three stars on the Huddersfield Town badge. Yeah. The two stars on the Berry FC badge. Yeah. And the three stars on the old Man City badge. Which, which club out of those three? Is the odd one out? It's to do with the stars. Right. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's your six questions. Yeah. I almost feel like I want to give away the, give the answers now and like. Maybe maybe put you put you out your misery and then get onto this bonus round. Yeah, you know what? I'll put you out your misery. Let's go through the answers, everyone. Right? Okay. Question one: Huddersfield Town formation. What year did you go with? Don't know it. What you didn't even guess a year? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd leave it blank. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's 1908 is what I've got oh, down right. here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question two: AFC. What does the A stand for? Athletic. Right, well, this is the controversial one, right? Nobody knows. Uh, okay. <laughs> as far as we know, <laughs> it doesn't stand for anything. I've asked Chris Murray this. I've asked everyone else, like, does it, does it stand for something? Athletic? Association? Uh, no, nobody yeah, knows. Yeah, association, happened. but then I've, I've asked some people like that, and they're like, oh, no, it's athletic, and I'm like, mm, so no, no, right, no, so no. I get a point. All right, like so we've got a footballer, nine times Premier League, over 200 appearances for... Huddersfield, two spells at Berry, twice player of the year, once played here for, for Berry, twice for Huddersfield, currently playing in League Two. Who'd you go with? I went with Peter Clark. You did, you can you got it right. Hooray! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right, you haven't got we've got one so far. But don't worry. Right. Uh no, I've got two. You've got to give me number two, because there's not a right answer, so I'll take two out. Well, no, it's, no two the, out. <laughs> it's not athletic. Well, no, it's not. That's a whole other club. Else. Well, it's not anything else, is it? They don't know. What? So if the wrong answer's <laughs> right, is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, take that. Well, I don't know. I think we'll need an independent adjudicator for that one. Um, yeah. Question for top goal scorer for for AFC. Tom Greaves. Yeah. Well, there you go. You've got you've got you've got two slash three. All right. Yeah. Uh, how many goals has he got? Oh, I've gone with eight. It's ten. Oh, right. Ten. Not far away. Right. Uh, which one's the odd one out of a Huddersfield, Berry, and Man City's old badge? Berry. Incorrect. The correct answer is Man City. Right. But I'll give you a bonus if you could possibly tell me a reason why. So what do, what do the Huddersfield stars represent? The league. Uh... Hazard a guess if you don't know what the Berry FC's stars may represent. FA Cup. Uh, what do the three stars on City's old badge represent? Oh, I don't have a clue. Same again, FA Cup. I don't know. <laughs> you, don't don't know. you don't know. You don't represent anything. The decorative. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, so you've got me there. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there you go. Um, <laughs> did we just put the 
make it look nice. So right, uh, yeah, no. uh, go on. So we've got you on. Go on. If I give you that, if I give you the athletic, I mean, I'm not sure I should. That I got you on. Uh, got you on three. Are you giving? Yeah. You, are you giving the last one? Right now. In my well, I don't know. I don't know if you play any uh, any any FIFA or anything at all like that. No, um, not really. No, no. Well, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I I've done this before. Uh, when in my younger days, you know, made myself on a game, put myself in the team. Yeah. But for you, there's been a point where you haven't had to do that. No. <laughs> you were on the game. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so you were on FIFA 16. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, it, I think it'd be fair to say that you would have been what the the third choice keeper on the game. Uh, probably? Yeah, probably third to yeah third to fourth. Yeah, yeah. So you'd probably think that FIFA probably didn't do a huge amount of research. No, no. <laughs> at that stage in FIFA 16. No. On the However, fact, I think it was just like a standard character for everyone that like <laughs> was just in like the first year pro sort of thing. So yeah. Right, um, uh, right. Jot, the, jot these categories down. We're going to play a game, and it's called, you'll know this game, higher or lower, right? But I've got some yeah. categories for you, right? Ball skills, defence, mental, passing, physical, shooting, and goalkeeping. So you've got one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven categories there. Was it? What was the third one? Mental. Mental. Right. Mental. So out of those seven categories, I want you to pick a category. Uh, we'll go for physical. Physical. Right. So I'm going to start you off with sprint speed. They gave you Red 42. Pop. <laughs> 42 they gave you for sprint speed out of, out of 100. So that's, that's our starting point, 42. Now, um, I'm going to pick another category, another uh, attribute out from physical. Is, is your number higher or lower than 42 on B for 16? Strength, higher or lower than 42? So higher than lower than 42 on uh, sprint speed? On, on strength. On strength. Um, higher. That is correct. Oh, You're at right. fifty-five. <laughs> All right, so we're on fifty-five. Right, pick another yeah. category. Uh, go defense. Defense. Okay, slide tackle. Higher or lower than fifty-five on FIFA sixteen. For Ed lower. Wilchinski. Lower. It is lower. It is lower. Yeah. Trying to have a guess what they gave you? 38. <laughs> 19. All right. So, well, to be fair, <laughs> we've done you in there. Great, as, it, as we've seen. <laughs> well, so. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> You're ahead of the time. All right. Um, so you, you're still in the game. You're still in the game. Uh, pick another category. So we've had mental, so we've, we've had defense, defense. We've done physical. Shooting. Now, this is going to be a dodgy on this. Um, finishing higher or lower to 19 lower got to the hazard a guess yeah lower got yeah, to yeah. Do, you, do, you wanna, do you wanna guess a number oh sorry mate uh, eight no, no better than that 13 all oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So we're on, we're on thirteen. Um, pick another category. Oh wow. Um, you've got ball skills, physical, or goalkeeping. Goalkeeping. All oh, right. Well, you... <laughs> uh, diving. Higher or lower the, the... than thirteen? Higher. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> They've given you fifty-six for that. Um, <laughs> right, and I think you've managed to survive. I think you somehow managed to survive this, Ed. <laughs> I've got four. I've got four and I've got three more left. <laughs> um, you've got a choice now ball. of... Yeah, ball skills. Ball, ball skills. skills, right. <laughs> Dribbling. 
What am I at? What have I got to get higher or lower than what? You're on 56. Yeah, lower. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. Do you want to guess what they gave you for dribbling? Dribbling. Uh, 33. <laughs> 16. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. Terrific. That's like, that's like, I think I can to barely fair, even play football. Ollie, I'm not going to lie. I think the last training session was... Um, was it last Thursday? And the gaffer put me left back, and I'm not gonna lie, it was awful. The lads might as well have played with a man <laughs> down. It was it's probably like irrelevant scoring to be fair. <laughs> right, well, um you have you've survived. You've survived. Yeah. Do you want do you want uh do you want, do you want a bonus one? I'll give you a I'll give you a just just a random random category. Yeah, go on then, go for it. Any any choice, what do you want to go for? Uh I'll go physical again. Okay. Agility. Higher or lower than 16? Higher. Ed Wilczynski, the goalkeeper, the cat. He's gone with higher. It is higher, you're correct. What Completed. number? Yeah, love that. What number do you reckon they gave you? So, what am I, so higher than 13? Agility. But you, it's got to be up there. It's got to be. <laughs> It's got so you've, got, you've got higher. I'll go round about like I'll go thirty six. Ooh, thirty five. Oh, thirty five. Wow. And you're and you're telling me you haven't played as Ed Wilczynski on FIFA sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> honest, no, I have been honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, well, well done. <laughs> you've you've survived that. Uh, I hope but you don't I get too. Better than the quiz anyway. I got I absolutely <laughs> rubbish at the quiz. <laughs> But, uh, you know, if you get any stick from any, any of the players, you can just say, well, you know, I haven't seen you on a game. I didn't yeah, have to well, make yeah. myself. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you might, I'll have to you have might, a little uh, bit of stats if I have to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, cheers, cheers, Ed. Uh, you've been a great sport and it's been a pleasure having a chat with you. Um, yep. Good luck for, uh, well, the re- re- resumption of football and hope to see yeah, you in, yeah, a, no, yeah. in an AFC shirt soon. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure um, somebody manages to catch you making a save. Uh, Talk maybe yeah, not probably not a slide either. tackle definitely not no, a dribble yeah. uh, I think my rating went down now yeah even more so we'll uh, <laughs> on that and it had to be against like literally I live five minutes away from Golka so I knew after the team and everything like that I, I was getting tech after the game looked at my phone and it was absolutely chock so yeah it couldn't have happened to like a worse team to be fair uh, <laughs> against it uh, but yeah it's one of the things in the end obviously we've got the we've got the, the goal sort of thing so yeah, so it's all put to team. Nice one. Right, well, yeah. good luck for the season, and I'll see oh. you uh, down at Radcliffe, hopefully very soon. Yeah, legend, mate. Right, nice cheers. One.